It's ETO. You know what that is yet? Ethane oxide, right? That's a gas that's mixed with steam for sterilization purposes. So if you see the abbreviation ETO, that means ethane oxide. They also, I want you to realize it's expensive. So when you see ETO, think expensive process. That's why a lot of facilities don't do that today. I don't see them out there very much. Uh, ETO, right? Also, when you think of ethane oxide, which is a gas process, I want you to think eight hours aeration. So if there's gas, it has to be completely dry. The whole process of aeration or to get the gas and the process through, just think eight hours. That's a CSD question. They'll ask you, what is the aeration? How long does it take? Eight hours is the correct answer. Okay, we're on ETO, expensive, eight hours aeration, right? So we know what a biological indicator. If you do not know what a biological indicator, I'll, I'll give you some examples of questions on CSD exam. What's the most reliable way to prove that something's been sterilized, right? There's many different ways, but, but the most reliable way is to use a type of bacteria in the sterilization process. And if it's killed, more likely it's been processed, right? So biological indicators use a live or type of bacteria. And that type of bacteria is Bacillus subtilis. So when you hear the uh, Bacillus sub, I like to say, uh, or the Bacillus subtilis, think of the ethane oxide. That's the type of bacteria they use to prove it's been sterilized uh, in an ethane oxide or ETO ga or gas type of sterilization. There's two bacteria I want you to remember. Bacillus subtilis is for ETO, and we'll get to the other ones in a couple minutes. Put this down. Moving right along, I want you to think economic, right? Eight hours aeration. Bacillus subtilis is the biological indicator. Low temperatures, right? 85 degrees. So if you see questions on the CST exam, which low, low temperatures, 85 come to mind, uh, more likely they're referring to an ethane oxide process, right? So if you have this process of elimination, yeah, more likely that's going to be the right answer. ETO or ethane oxide gas process or sterilization is the right answer. It needs to be completely dry. Right? Instruments must be dry. So they ask you on a CSC question, uh, what process or what sterilization process needs to be completely dry? Yeah, ETO is your right answer. Now you ask yourself why that is. I want you to do some research on ethane oxide. Is it toxic to the patient? If we don't dry all that process off the instruments, is this gas or ethane oxide toxic to humans? Yes, it is. So when you do some research on that, you'll see that we need to make sure it's completely dry, that there's no particles left on these instruments. So when we use it for your own health, because they're carthogenic, uh, or the patient's safety too. So what process that has to be completely dry and it has to be ETO is the correct answer on that. It's used for sensitive items, right? Scopes, right? Lenses, things that can't go in steam. And there's other processes for the, those also, but for right now, ethane oxide, Ethane oxide was used for more sensitive items like scopes, right? All right, so there's an expensive version of sterilization. And I probably have tons of questions on that, but we're going to jump right over to steam, right? Steam process of sterilization. Yeah, it's more economical. So when you hear steam, what is a more economic, a more economical type of sterilization? Steam should come to mind. It's very hot. Right? So steam, we got low temperatures. No, steam is the opposite. It works on a higher, higher temperature. Right? H2O, no brainer, right? Steam, there's water involved, right? Very economical. Now there's some temperature parameters I want you to remember. That a gravity displacement system. When you hear gravity, it equals cycles. You see on a question it says gravity equals cycles. And 250 is typically where a gravity displacement uh, steam sterilizer is going to be at 250, right? It can range from 250 to 270, but you hear gravity on the CSD exam, it's more likely the 250 parameter, right? Temperature wise. Now, what is a flash sterilization, which uses a steam, but flash? You know, in surgery, sometimes we need items that are emergency, not an implant, right? You cannot flash an implant. 
but items that you need because the case can continue unless you have this item, right? The patient's in jeopardy. We steam it off at a high temperature quick for a lower temperature times. And I'll go over that a little bit, but that's what a flash is, right? So your research is, is what is an IUSS? You probably know it already, but I want you to do some research on what an IUSS is, right? It's not the SS minnow. 250 is kind of the 250, 270 range is where steam was a flash sterilizer can be. Uh, but when you think of gravity, 250, when you think flash, you know, you're doing it quickly, 250, something called a pre-vacuum system. Uh, they use that, it can be ranged from that 250 to 270 range. But two, if it says pre-vacuum on a CST exam, it's going to be 270 all the time. If it's a flash sterilizer or gravity, could range in that 250 range. Uh, but I'll go over some parameters of the times on that. Steam sterilization. So flash sterilization, 250, right? I think I confused a little bit here on this. So pre-vacuum, 270. What is a Bowie dick test? You ever hear about that? The questions on CST exam will be, how often do you do a Bowie dick test? So I'll tell you what a Bowie dick test is. A test for PSI or pressure or leakage within an autoclave. Now, these autoclaves are big ovens that you process in steam or ETO, uh, the sterilization process. But the reason we need pressure or humidity, a certain humidity level, or a PSI, which is a pounds per square inch, in this case, you need like a 27 PSI. Uh, the Bowie Dick test done once a day will test to make sure there's no leakage in that, that we are getting that parameters of that nominal 27 PSI, right? So Bowie Dick test with a pre-vacuum 270, Bowie Dick test is done once a day, the test for leakages, right? Leakages. So anyways, there's a biological indicator. And I told you a little bit about the bacillus subtilis. The bacillus sternothermophilus is another type of bacteria used for a biological indicator. So we have two bacteria that we use to prove the viability or the sterilization process within that biological indicator. And I'm not going to go into detail on how that works. You guys can do your own research on that. But for test purposes, if they say what type of bacteria would they use for a steam sterilization, bacillus sterno, keep it simple and stupid, or the bacillus sternothermis, thermophilus uh, is what they use. They also call it genothermo, right? or I'm sorry, geni. Geo bacillus, right? But I like to just say bacillus sterno for the steam sterilization or the geo bacillus, right? Biological indicator. Don't confuse that with a chemical indicator, which are tape or little things within trays to verify that it's been processed. It's believe it or not, it's not the it's not the most reliable way as a chemical. It's a biological. Chemical is just verified it's been through a process. The most reliable way to prove something that's sterilized is a biological indicator, right? Now, this is important for the flash. We know what a flash sterilizer is, right? Something you need right away. Now, we have things that are unwrapped. Things that are wrapped, maybe in a peel pack. And things that are in a lumen. Now, what's a lumen, right? Something that has a tubular aspect to it, right? Maybe a yank hour uh, suction device, something that has a tubular aspect to it. So anyways, if you're flashing something, the temperature, three minutes for an unwrapped, and I would remember this, three minutes for an unwrapped item in a flash sterilizer. Now, typically, it will be at 270, 27 PSI, and unwrapped will be a minimum time of three minutes for an unwrapped item. Something just by itself in the tray, right? Now, it's four minutes for something that's wrapped. Right, keep these parameters in mind. So if you have CSD questions saying on a flash sterilizer, what is the time for a wrapped item? Right? Four minutes. And something that has a lumen will be 10 minutes. Three, four, 10, right? Easy numbers. So just to kind of recap on that, steam sterilizer, economical. It's very hot, higher temperatures than an ETO. Gravity equals cycles. It will be at a temperature of 250. And all this will be running on about 27 PSI. I believe a pre-vac will be about 12 to 15 PSI. And we'll go over that a little bit later, but 
flash sterilizer, what's a flash? Something that you need right away. You never flash like implants, that's a no-no. A, a Bowie dick test is something that's the most reliable way to um, verify that there's no leakage and you have the proper pressure, right? 27 PSI. Pre-vac is at 270. The biological indicator bacteria is the Bacillus sternothermo, right? And three minutes for unwrapped, four minutes for a wrapped, 10 minutes for something with a lumen to flash an item right away. So you can see there, it's, they're working at a higher temperature at lower times, opposed to where, you know, this is a little bit longer for the process at a lower temperature, okay? Now, some other options here, there's two. They have a Sterad system and a Steris system. Yeah, Sterad is S-T-E-R-R-A-D, and Steris is S-T-E-R-R-I-S. Both ways to process certain items. Now, when it's rubber, now let's go kind of these two items I want you to remember. If you think of a sterad system with a D on the end, you're thinking of hydroperoxide. It has this bubbly action to it. So when you think of sterad with a D, think hydroperoxide, hydroperoxide. Steris with an S, think of parasitic acid. Those are the two compounds within those two, uh, two systems, or two sterilization processes. Now, steris system, they're both, now when I think of sterad with an, a D, hydroperoxide, I think of things that are with like a rubbery items, but they're for sensitive items. You know, for instance, the steris system, parasitic acid, are also used for scopes. So sensitive items that can't go in steam because they'll be damaged, right? And I would believe the time parameters for a steris system for parasitic acid for scopes are 30 minutes. So when you think of how long it would take to actually process something, 30 minutes is what you should answer on a CSD exam. But why doesn't someone out there in that YouTube world, why doesn't someone out there in that YouTube world verify that for me? Okay. And all this information here, fact check it for me. Don't confuse for sterilization, but for disinfection, right? To disinfect something. There's low level, there's high level, and there's intermediate levels for on CST exam. So we'll start off with a low level. Typically, if it doesn't have the ability, it has no spores, you can use a low level disinfectant. And that usually is for CST questions. So they'll say something, what type of disinfectant would you use if it does not contain spores? Right, something that is a low level disinfectant. So why don't you do some research on what a low level disinfectant is out there and see what kind of answers you get in the comments. High level disinfectant, right? Cydex, do you know the other name for Cydex? Who can pronounce that word? Anyone? Gluteraldehyde, right? Now that is a high level disinfectant. So when they bring instruments back, they'll soak it in this gluteraldehyde, otherwise known as Cydex, right? Uh, 20 minutes is also what I want you to say. 20 minutes is what we, we actually soak this for. You can soak it overnight up to 10 hours, but typically the minimum time is 20 minutes. You can soak it in there, but I wouldn't leave it in there any longer than 10 hours, especially if it comes in on a call overnight, you want to leave it soaking, but high level, think gluteraldehyde, right? An intermediate type of disinfectant, you probably can't see it over yonder there, is isopropyl or alcohol, otherwise known as rubbing alcohol, right? All these are disinfectants. So, High level, I'm sorry, low level disinfectant contains no spores. High level disinfectant, 20 minutes that it can soak as instruments come back. 20 minutes is the time frame, or up to 10 minutes. Gluteraldehyde is the name for a high level disinfectant, otherwise known as Cydex. And you will have that question out there. What is another name for gluteraldehyde? Cydex is the answer, right? Intermediate is isopropyl or alcohol or rubbing alcohol is an intermediate type of uh, disinfectant, right? If you guys have any questions about sterilization, maybe you can fact check me. I'm only doing this video for my class, but if you have any questions about sterilization, I know there's a bigger, large, broader spectrum of sterilization, but for CST purposes, why don't you throw it in the comments there? Anyone that's a surgical tech, anyone that works in healthcare, especially the OR, or even a steril sterilization, uh, let me know what you guys do out there. Do they use ETO still? What's the most common thing? Is any of this right?
I think it is. But hey, in the comments, tell me what you guys want to see. I think you want to see draping or draping techniques. But if you're interested in a dissection that we did with Dr. T, watch that video right there, right? I'll put that link somewhere at the top there. <laughs> Otherwise, subscribe to my little face down over here. And the next video will be right over here. Otherwise, thanks for watching.